welcome to our first in-person annual meeting in four years. Isn't this awesome? Um, we have a full program today, and uh, we don't want to hold up the pizza, so um, we're going to proceed as people trickle in. Uh, we have a, a lot going on today. We'll talk about upcoming uh, paddles and events. Welcome any new members that are present. We'll have a preview from Margo of the How to Plan a Bay Paddle Class, which needs a better acronym, don't you think? Um, <laughs> we're not marketing people. Um, and then a, a preview of the, uh, of the Skills Clinic of 2023 uh, from one of our new coordinators. We'll cover what happened at the latest planning meeting this week, some big things. Um, then it, what we're all waiting for is the vote on the budget and especially the officers. Some of us, some of us are looking forward to this more than others. Um, <coughs> And then finally, a Gearhead with Nathan Moody and Muscle of the Month with Mary Ann Furta. And then we'll have a little break, and our featured presentation today is uh, Yuan Nicholson and Jonathan Luskin, Reindeer Cheese and Whiskey, Lessons Learned from Paddling Haida Gwaii, Helgeland, and Prince William Sound. So we're all looking forward to that. Is our Evelyn and Rick here? I think they're downstairs. They're downstairs, okay. Great. Um, so upcoming events, uh, we've got the, uh, we had a Gonzo train paddle for tomorrow, but um, the poor Gonzo folks, this has been the winter from hell for training for the Gonzo, especially if you're only available on weekends. Uh, the, the atmospheric rivers have been perfectly timed, but the Gonzo will be happening, we hope, next weekend, March 25th. Um, and for those who don't know, it, it's about a 40 mile route that covers from North, from China Camp to uh, Angel Island and Alcatraz and Treasure Island and even the tip of Alameda Island. Um, the idea is to go around or touch as many islands in one day as possible. And people start uh, at or before dawn and take advantage of currents. Um, if we have bad weather on the 25th, I guess there's a rain date on the 26th, or if that doesn't work, they'll do it sometime in April. But we're really all hoping and if you don't want to do the Gonzo, but you'd like to participate in some way, there is a paddle to go to Red Rock and greet the Gonzo participants on, the, on their way back toward the end in the afternoon, which is really kind of a nice party on, on the beach on Red Rock. So um, check that out. Um, Dawn Patrol, Dave Littlejohn's famous um, Dawn Launch at Horseshoe Bay, going to Angel Island, and then having a gourmet breakfast. And I believe the sign up is full for that. But keep keep an eye on it in case there are people who drop out. We've got a new member paddle on April second. Of course, there's one also today, this afternoon. Um, we've got a blast bass planning meeting on April 11, which which is on Zoom. Bass general meeting April 26, which will also be on Zoom. Uh, pool sessions happen every Thursday at Sonoma State University. Um, we've got a forward stroke clinic by Jen Fury on April 14, right on Alameda Island here. Um, there's a coastal paddle from Horseshoe Bay to Pacifica, very challenging paddle, on April 15. And Kathleen Scanlon will be offering a wilderness first aid class, uh, intensive two full day session um, it's on the calendar, and it's been posted to Current, so, so check it out. Um, and then we have another upcoming event that uh, I don't know of anyone who's participated in it, but Scott Fitzgerald is here to tell us about a circumnavigation of Lake Tahoe this summer. And I'm going to put that up here. So Scott, if you want to come up, find my cursor. There you go. Good morning. Good morning. I'm, uh, my name is Scott Fitzgerald. I'm a current member of Basque, but I retired from Basque for many years and was a member before. Um, I live up at Lake Tahoe now, and uh, a couple years ago I was building a sea kayak, and uh, the director of the Tahoe Environmental Research Center, which is uh, sponsored by UC Davis, and is the primary research outfit up at the lake and does all the all the environmental work up there. Uh, he's a friend, and I said, you know, I think I paddle this thing around the lake. And he said, well, why don't we make it into a fundraiser for Turk? 
So we've done it twice now. Um, and let me just give you kind of a brief rundown of what it's like. Um, I don't know, how many people have had a well in common? No idea. Oh, good. So I can mention places and you'll know what I'm talking about. Well, we started at Sand Harbor. It, it, it runs over seven days. It's about 65 miles around the lake, so we run anywhere from about 6 to about 13 miles in a day. So we started at Sand Harbor. Um, we typically, we, we have room for 40 participants. Registration's open now. And uh, one of the special features of this is that the Environmental Research Center itself provides lecturers or professors from UC Davis and also staffers at Turk who uh, provide lectures. And this is the research boat that they have. It's the John LeCant. We always get a lecture from uh, somebody on that. And they're measuring lake clarity, mice and shrimp concentrations, and all sorts of things like that. It gets very much into the weeds very quickly. Um, we also get lectures on water. Um, let's see, this, this is a point of That is a retired geologist who is explaining the, the uh, geology of Rubicon Point to everybody. Uh, what a glacial moraine is, how Arnold Bay was formed, and things like that. Um, this is the mouth of Ward Creek. That's a, a Turk researcher. Uh, they do a lot of stream research up there, so he delivered an on water lecture. And while he was doing that, I saw a bald eagle take a trout, so I, I uh, got a shot of the, with my crappy cell phone of a bald eagle, a tiny little thing in the picture, so it's not included in the slides. So. Um, that's Jeff Schlato. Dr. Schlato is a professor at UC Davis. He's the director of Turk. And in this particular shot, he was delivering a lecture on the Tahoe Keys. Uh, the Tahoe Keys are the south, lake, uh, south end of the lake. They're an environmental disaster. It's a, a great threat to the lake. So we paddled in there and paddled out. Our route takes us all counterclockwise over the north shore, down the west shore, across the south shore, and up the east shore. So we're counterclockwise, which is favorable for winds. Uh, here, everybody's approaching Cave Rock for the last day. Um, this is out of sequence. That's going in general Bay. Uh, Cave Rock is a, is a cool little beach. Uh, one of the things we do for people on the turf on the surf is uh, provide overnight boat storage. We, we lay a steel cable out on the beach. Everybody changes their boats up to it. And then we provide a bus that takes you from the takeout back to the put in to get your car. So that's one of the services that's provided. This year we'll have a couple of professional guides. I think one of them will be Peter Donahue, who I believe is a member. Is he here today? No. Okay. Um, so far, weather has been bluebird days one after another. We can cancel one day for rain. The whole thing ends at a party at our house in Incline Village uh, where people gather for food and refreshments and allow us to buy and also to make contributions to church because it is a fundraiser. So that's how you do it. Um, June 19th to the 25th, seven days. You can come for one day or come for all seven days. And the, let, the website is tahoe.ucdavis.edu slash events, and I'll find the lead links to sign up there. Question? Oh, that's a good question. Um, people make their own arrangements overnight. We typically launch at 7.30 or 8 in the morning. So we're off the water by noon, typically, before any of the winds pick up. And you're on your own after that. Um, so some people have camped. There are two or three places around the lake where you can camp. You would have to get reservations like now. It's, it tends to, uh, tends to fill up pretty quickly. And then there are motels, hotels, B and B, VRBO, all that sort of thing. Anything else? Thank you for your time. There's some chairs up front here too. Said like a true professor. <laughs> okay, um, I hope the snow is melting by the time this battle starts. <laughs> so this is the time in our meeting when we uh, ask new people who are coming to the meeting for the first time, whether you're a new member or a prospective member, thinking about being a member, um, 
come on up and tell us who you are. And why don't you use the microphone? For the first time, actually, we are recording this meeting, which will be then put on our Bass YouTube channel. Um, be aware of that. Do we have any uh, any new members here today? I know we have some signed up. Come on up. Hello, uh, my name is Art, and I live in Alameda, and I'm not sure how I heard about that. It was a, a long time ago, um, and I started kayaking maybe 12 years ago, but I've been on a fairly long break, so I'm getting back into it, um, and right now I have an Oru folding. My kayaking has been on in the bay mostly, so I have not been out in the out on the sea, but I'm hoping to expand my skills. Um, and uh, as part of that, I'll be taking a class next weekend, uh, just to refresh on rescues, etc. Who else do we have? Come on up. And anyone else, just come on up, and we'll uh, give you a chance to introduce yourself. Anyone else coming here for the first time? Come on up. Lauren. <laughs> so to be correct, this is our first bass meeting. We took up kayaking during the pandemic, or the very beginning. So we first kayaked with the Petaluma paddlers, and then they mentioned uh, Bass and so we took bass and have participated in some bass paddles. Uh, we live in Santa Rosa and so we've done most of our paddling over in Tomales Bay and Lake Sonoma and other places that are closer. But uh, we've ranged fairly widely also, including Lake Tahoe, that's wonderful paddling there. Uh, we, how long have we been kayaking? Well, I've been on the water for good chunk of my life. I was a sea scout, you know, paddled in rafts and all other sorts of devices. Um, my wife is a little bit newer to the paddling game, like a, like, that's her. Yeah. <laughs> what, what kind of guys do we have? Well, we started out with an inflatable advanced elements, and now we've graduated to a fully drop stitch inflatable from, um, maybe from yeah, it's still from Advanced Elements, but it's very rigid. It's like a hard shell kayak, only we can put it in our trunk. So our portability problems are somewhat solved there. Where do we like to paddle? Almost anywhere, actually. Uh, as long as the wind isn't too great, we do have a problem with wind. So I'm sure none of you do, but we do. <laughs> anyway, that's about it. Anyone else? Oh. I, I see I don't recognize anybody, so I'm sort of a new member of Basque. I think I, I was in Basque about 10 years ago. I've been, I wanted to, uh, what kind of kayaks do you have? That's why I wanted to talk a little bit. Uh, I built my own kayaks. I've done three strip boats. And uh, so if anybody wants to talk about how you do that and wants to get infected with that bug, I'm, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> um, I live in Incline Village of Bandit, so mostly on, on Lake Tahoe. I did three of the past campouts at Mendocino back in the day. Thanks.
Anyone else? Uh, people are pointing. Is there someone? Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Have I missed anyone else? I think. Okay. That's awesome. Great. Okay. Um, and actually, for those who are newer members, uh, this will be of interest to you. So, um, there are two clinics that many of our newer members like to take. The first one is the um, How to Plan a Bay Paddle class that Margot Otway um, originated uh, three years ago at the beginning of the pandemic when we were doing in-person activities and she developed this class using Zoom sessions with a graduation paddle later on in person. Um, and it's been done, I don't know, maybe a dozen times now over the last 10 times, okay. Um, and uh, this has been the way that people, people get started uh, paddling on the bay. So she's going to tell us a little bit about how this class works, because many older members have not been through it, and newer members don't know about it yet. So she's going to tell us about it. Come on up. Hi. So the, actually, the origin of this class was we, uh, we thought, oh, we need to have some kind of navigation clinic about paddling the bay. And I said, let's get Tom to design that. <laughs> The curriculum is Tom's. Um, I worked, me, yeah. Yeah. I, I worked on the homework, but the rest of it's all him. And it's uh, he resigned from that when he took over the presidency, and it's now me and James Davis. Is James here? Yeah. Oh, right. Um, okay, so how do I advance the slide here?
where it goes, how to know what's out there, what to do about it. Um, and we also cover how to use a marine radio with interactive, an interactive session on that. Um, and one of the things that really gets to me about this class is the very first time we held it over Zoom uh, in August of 2020, one of the pods, the sea otters, they started meeting and paddling in person because, of course, you know, people were just getting together with friends and small groups to paddle at that time. And that group of people who got to know each other uh, and bonded uh, over that, during that class, they've become a cohesive force in Basque and quite important to the club. Um, see, what else should I say? Um, the, the class covers a lot of the topics that used to be taught in classroom sessions for the skills clinic. So it's now a requirement, more or less, for the skills clinic. <coughs> And it means you don't have to sit in the classroom as much during the skills clinic, which is good. Um, the way it works, uh, we have three two-hour evening Zoom sessions. And we now also have an optional, but really fun and highly recommended, uh, in-person graduation paddle. Um, so we take 12 students at a time, and they work in three pods of four to plan fantasy paddles. Probably another slide. Yeah. Oh, whatever. Um, that's just a decorative answer. Um, and the fantasy paddles that, that the students plan in the class are really technical, challenging ones. They involve planning for currents, uh, you have to cross shipping lanes, um, you have to have a plan B in case of, in case of bad weather. So because they're fantasy paddles and not ones you're actually necessarily going to do, we can make them really hard. Uh, and so you learn a lot in the course of planning them. Um, is, is Teresa here? Yes. yes. Uh, could you say a little bit about the experience of being a student? super new. I didn't even have a boat at the time, right? I just thought, well, you know, am I going to learn anything without a boat? Oh my gosh, was I wrong? Um, so I learned a ton. Um, I learned what I didn't know. Um, so I had been out on the bay in a folding kayak, like out on the bay. I had no idea how dangerous that was. <laughs> now I do. <laughs> um, so it saved my life, essentially, is what that amounts to. Um, if you geek out on charts and things like that, it's totally for you. I spent inordinate amounts of time late at night geeking out on bathometry and how to read charts. Um, I remember I went to Mendo shortly before that. Somebody handed me a chart of Mendo. I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> I've, I, you know, I've read um, land maps forever, um, but the, um, you know, it just looks totally different when you're talking about water. So. Highly recommend, took me from zero to 60, motivated me to get a boat, and totally worthwhile. Met lots of great people. There's so much knowledge in this club, you really should take advantage.
time information is in this document. We do some presenting during the class, but a lot of class time is for evaluating the paddle plans and for interactive sessions. Um, yeah, one of the things the homework does is uh, it introduces you to a lot of the online resources that you can use for paddle planning um, above and beyond the trip planner. So that's just one of the things about the homework. Um, any questions, thoughts, comments? Yes. That was the place on the back website. I think the course, but I can't remember how to do that. Um, you still have access to the homework. That's perpetual. How do you do that? To access it. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 step after taking the How to Plan a Bay Paddle class, in fact, it's a prereq for it, is to take the skills clinic. Um, and we're, we're gearing up for the 2023 edition of the skills clinic. Uh, we have some, let's see, we have the, could we have all of the coordinators stand up? Amelia's not here. Amelia's not here, okay. Good job. And I believe that Spencer Green, one of our new coordinators, is going to present a little overview. Well, we both have. Oh, you want both are? Okay. <laughs> Owen as well. Great. Come on up. Wow. Hey, how's it going? Hey, we are your skills coordinators for 23. I'm Spencer. I'm Owen. Uh, showing some of the action. 
And uh, uh, the important thing to remember are some of the key dates that are coming up for this. Um, the, uh, we need to start with uh, getting volunteers. So volunteers applications will start in April. It will not be April 1st. That's not a good day for that kind of stuff. And uh, then we're going to do student application and selection in May. And uh, the first activity is the volunteer weekend on July 22nd and 23rd. That's to make sure that all of the volunteers are in al alignment so we uh, do a good job for the skills clinic itself. The skills clinic uh, weekends uh, start in uh, July 29th and the last day is, uh, is uh, September 10th. Uh, so watch for currents uh, for more information as uh, we make it available. And we have already uh, talked about the fantastic team of coordinators. Looking forward for your support, uh, both as uh, volunteers uh, in running the event and also uh, for students. Thank you very much. So it's one of the advantages of the skills clinic that the students don't know about because the volunteers get the benefit. And I really encourage you, to, if you haven't volunteered before, there's, there's opportunities for everyone at every skill level to help out. And so think about it this year. When, when the call comes, uh, go ahead and apply. And you don't have to go every weekend. If the students have to be there every weekend. But the volunteers can just do you know one or two days, whatever you have time for. Okay. Um, planning meeting. Um, <laughs> this is what it's like. Yeah, on Zoom. Um, um, our, vice, our vice president, Beth Kim, runs a planning meeting and she normally reports, but unfortunately she's at uh, her daughter's volleyball tournament in Sacramento today. She would much rather be here. So I'm, I'm going to try to, to channel her. Uh, so um, at the March 14 planning meeting, we learned that BASC now has liability and accident insurance. There will be more information about that, but um, this is a, a new thing. We've never had this before. Well, <laughs> um, we now have decided we will be recording not only the featured speaker of our general meeting, uh, but the actual entire meeting, this part of the meeting as well, so that if people miss the meeting and want to catch up with what's going on, um, it will be posted on the Basque YouTube channel. Um, and uh, Nathan Moody here is today our, our filming coordinator. <laughs> and we are indebted to Jonathan Luskin, who is a professional video person um, Jonathan, where are you? Stand up. So all of the, the videos you see on the Bath YouTube channel were, were edited and put, put up by Jonathan. He's been doing this for years, um, and it's one of the many roles behind the scenes in Bath that, that we are so grateful for. Um, we finalized the 2023 budget, which we will be voting on today. Um, Ross Wang proposed uh, a new uh, phone app that he wants to develop that will 
sort of function as kind of a combination GPS and trip planner to use on paddles. And uh, so we have approved him to get an Apple developer's license for Bass. What? And uh, this is something that they're going to be working on over the next several months. And we're looking forward to uh, seeing this happen. It will be available for both Apple. <laughs> for both Apple and Android phones. Elizabeth, you got a question? One thing to note about the app is it enables you to Yes, so all the information on the trip planner would be available even when you don't have a cell signal. That's what we yes. And um, another big, a really big one was uh, after a six week trial and uh, lots of discussion and, and uh, training, uh, we have decided to switch permanently from our old email listserv buzz to a new forum called Currents. Um, so and we've had <laughs> over over 250 people have used Currents already, uh, just in the last six weeks. So it's it's really been catching on. There have been way more posts on Currents than we had on Buzz, and you can post pictures and videos, and um, it, it's really working out very well. If you haven't tried it yet. Um, there's lots of support available. Um, there's a video you can watch, introductory. There's an email uh, that you can contact for, for support. Um, and there are lots of people that are willing to help out if you're having any difficulties. Um, so this is really exciting. And the, the committee um, has been working on this for two years. And for much of that time, they were meeting every week. It's been a huge effort, and I'm really grateful to, to the committee. Could the committee, all of the committee members who are here, please stand up. One is we need to pass the budget for 2023. Um, and I'd like Tim Yarish to come up. He is our treasurer. Tim? And we've been working on this budget for several months. Um, and uh, Tim, you want to just give us a brief overview, and then we're going to have a vote. Oh, OK. Thanks, Tom. Um, this has been reviewed at two previous uh, planning meetings, and there's been a number of comments and whatnot on it. Um, this budget looks a lot like last year's budget, and uh, with some minor it's actually revisions. Um, What's that? It's not really readable from back there. <laughs> OK. The, the thing I've highlighted in yellow, the things that are, are different, um, the general liability insurance is $2,500. That was approved in February's meeting. The um, current forum is about $900 a year. That was approved. Um, and our new program of instructor training is uh, $2,150. It benefits all of BASC and all of the. Um, kayaking community um, and for the second year we're having the um, uh, where is it now the um, the, uh, no. the the subsidy for the um, uh, training um, where is it Instructor training. No, but for the, 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 uh, the scholarship. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There it is, the very bottom. Yes, okay. And that is off to a roaring start. Uh, we've got uh, fully, fully subscribed. 
uh, reaching out to a diverse group of uh, individuals, young, diverse individuals, the $500 per donation uh, for, for that. But, and, and it's been subsidized by one uh, anonymous donation that adds uh, one student to the donation, to the, to the uh, program. So, um, unless there's any comments or questions, we'll go ahead and ask for a vote of, uh, by a show of hands. All those in favor of adopting this 2023 uh, budget, put your hands up. Uh, thank you. Hands down. Anybody opposed? Uh, it's a unanimous approval. We're done. Well, that was painless. <laughs> so, uh, uh, now for a very consequential part of this meeting, we will be um, voting on BAS officers for next year. Um, and I wanted to start out with just who, who we currently have. Uh, I'm the president, Vice President Beth Kim, Secretary Nadia Dimitri, member at large Jim Ferris. Uh, Tim Yarish is our treasurer, and he act, treasurer is the one term that is actually three years rather than one year to provide more continuity. Um, so uh, he's continuing, um, and not an elected position, but a very important volunteer one is our food maven, uh, who's been David Caruso Reagan. He has been coordinating lunch for today, which is going to be amazing. Um, so uh, before you move on, yeah, I'd just like to say this group has been the most. Um, successful in implementing new programs in years. Thank you. This has been a real team effort. And I want to say also that this has been a great time to be an officer in Bath because there is so much energy in this club that whenever we come up with ideas and say, hey, how about this? A bunch of people jump up and do it. And, and so it makes us look really good. But in fact, <laughs> it's all of you that have made this club as vital and, and so much new stuff going on. So it's been a great time to be an officer in Basque. And I think this next year is going to be awesome. Um, so the way that our Basque um, Officer succession works is uh, the president appoints a nominating committee. Um, and uh, let's see, don't I have the slide here? Oh, here it is. The nominating committee this year was David Caruso Radin, Susan Snow, and Jonathan Luskin. And um, they are. <laughs> They are appointed in secret to allow them freedom to, uh, <laughs> to do their work um, without people blocking their phone numbers. And, and, <laughs> and they work very hard to assemble a team of people who are willing to serve and, and uh, able to work together. Um, and we also entertain nominations from anyone, but traditionally we have not received other nominations um, for some reason. <laughs> um, how many people in this room have been a BASP officer? Stand up. Okay. All right. So, um, you know, we, we, we our terms are, for the most part, are just one year. So we actually have lots of people serving as BAS officers. It can be a lot of fun. And I encourage you, if you get a call from a nominating committee member, don't just hang up the phone. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> it's a really fun club to work with. I love the people I'm working with in this club. It's really been fun. Um, so um, this year's nominees 
are uh, for president, Chris Lewis. And Chris is here. Please stand up. <laughs> for vice president, Elizabeth Rowell. <laughs> for secretary, Ross Wang. And member at large uh, is Dwight Brown. <laughs> and our food maven uh, is Julie Small, right here. <laughs> and uh, once again, our treasurer, serving the third year of his three year term, is Tim Yarish. <laughs> So at this point, I would like a show of hands for people. We're going we're gonna to vote on the entire slate of four candidates. Uh, how many people in favor of uh, electing this slate of candidates? Raise your hands. OK. All those opposed? Congratulations. <laughs> And our uh, officers uh, take office on April 1st. In <laughs> <laughs> <And> 12 days. <laughs> Can they stand up? <laughs> OK. Thank you very much. Um, What's the request for the officers to stand up? All, all the new officers. All the new officers, please stand up. How about up front? Yes. Come on up. Responsibility, and, and uh, I don't think I can possibly fill the shoes of the, of the previous administration, but we'll give it a shot. And one question for Tom is: the the presidential yacht comes with the boat trip. Right? <laughs> yeah, the presidential yacht stays a presidential yacht. <laughs> in which we'd like to introduce the food kitty. Do you have it? Yes, I do. OK. Um, so the way that we do our, our meals with our general meetings, and a lot of you that are used to our Zoom meetings don't know this, but um, when we have in-person meetings, we always have a meal. And uh, to try to cover most of the expenses, we have a food kitty, um, this jar that we pass around, and we ask for donations. It's not required, but you know, if you could tip in you know, 10 bucks, more or less, that would be a big help. Um, and this is going toward our, our pizza and salad and, and desserts today. OK, next, uh, Nathan Moody, uh, Mr. Gearhead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hi. I'm Nathan. If we haven't met before, uh, you're lucky, I guess. Um, uh, welcome to Gearhead. This is five minutes starting the timer now, in which I encourage you to all basically spend your money. Uh, so uh, we love gear, and we are um, all kayakers. We love equipment uh, to be uh, safe on the water. And uh, this is the last gearhead of the Colton administration. So, um, so I wanted to kind of come full circle, if you will. Who remembers the very, very first gearhead that we did this time last year? Does anyone remember what the topic was? Booty. Nope. That was the second. Gloves. Gloves. Do you know? So um, uh, we're going to come full circle and boru borus of gearhead, as it were. And we're going to talk about gloves again because one of my favorite types of gloves that I mentioned in that meeting 
it are do-it-yourself gloves that you can build using plans on our website. And they are paddling mitts. Uh, the good Don Barch in the back of the room has built these for myself and for Krista, and they're great. They're open palm mitts. And the great thing about them is that uh, you can peel them off of your fingers when you need manual dexterity, and then you can put your fingers back into them when your fingers are cold. And it's a really perfect combo. In fact, uh, if you size it right, you can put fingerless gloves underneath them. So in my uh, uh, constant desire to uh, be the evangelist for this style of gloves, I have discovered that not one two companies make commercial versions of these. I'm really doing this just so I can actually do uh, uh, puppet animals in the projector. Um, but these are actually from, oh, where are they at? These are actually from NRS. Shockingly enough, they uh, do make good stuff every once in a while. And, oh. and so the way these work are, put your hand on in there. It's got a palm, so you have nice uh, contact with the paddle shaft, which is nice for, for Greenland and for Euro blades. And then if I need to get something on my PFD or eat a snack, I just go like this, and then my fingers are out, and then just put them back in. And uh, anyone who's paddled with me, especially this winter, knows that basically as soon as I stop doing anything physical, I just like turn into an iceberg. And so this is really, these are great, and they also do make actually really excellent <laughs> puppets. Um, so I uh, do not remember the name of this product necessarily, but you can uh, just find them under mitts on the NRS website. Uh, they have a nice little kind of Detail you might overlook, but they've got little snaps. So you can snap them together and just throw them over a line to dry. So just a nice little detail. Um, <laughs> Level 6, which is another manufacturer, and they're more known for whitewater gear, they make mitts as well, which are actually even thicker than these. I believe these are one and a half millimeter neoprene, maybe two, uh, which is great. Um, they have the uh, interesting product name of Shittens. <laughs> Instead of mittens, and uh, I think is there mittens you shred in, I think is the product description. Um, so these are not the only ones on the market, but these have, I've never seen these available uh, before this year. So highly recommend, and oh look at that, we have some time left so we can get to our break and get on to the presentation. Have a good one. of gear that goes gets handed from president to president, I've discovered a box of Basque uh, uh, cards. And I've made a bunch of little packets of five cards here on the table if you want to pick up some cards. I use some, I keep some in the glove compartment of my car. And you know how we have to put in when you're you're meeting you know people that are paddling that aren't Basque members and they're really curious about the club, hand them a card so they, they remember who we are. So I uh, pick one up from the table. Uh, in the break. Okay, and uh, now um, I'd like to ask Marianne Ferda to come up. Marianne, here. She's our our uh, muscle of the month woman. Well, she's going to give us some exercises. So perhaps you could, because I'm going to be using both hands. So maybe I'll do. I'll do. I'll do an intro. Okay. So so I typically do. You know the stretching um, thing, and as we get older, we need to hold our stretches longer, and so that gets kind of tedious, and so I thought, okay, I was actually inspired by Alan Kepner's um, 75th birthday and his engagement with Tai Chi, and so what I want to um, pass along to you today is a way of mobilizing shoulders um, and as I say that, don't do anything that is not comfortable for your shoulders, okay? Because there's all kinds of things that can be kind of suboptimal. So, I, do you think I could use this? Okay, okay. So, um, I don't know, stand up, because it's almost break time. Okay, and then give yourself a little bit more space, because we're going to be moving our arms. And, 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 and you're all, I'm, I'm trusting. 
saying all of it because there's no way I can see everybody from here. So first I start. Some of the muscles that we that we use that we don't need to use when we're paddling are the muscles that bring the shoulders up to the ears. So just to begin, let's remind ourselves, yeah, there's this one. Okay, so bring your shoulders way up and then let the shoulders drop. And then lift them up, take a breath in, and throw your shoulders down and right, good. Inhale. Exhale. Okay, great. So that's one thing you can do, and especially when it's windy and you start doing this kind of thing, just really helps. Okay, another thing that we do, people that don't kayak, right? When I talk to people who are not kayakers, and they talk about, don't your shoulders get tired? So we know if we're using our shoulders a lot, we're not doing it right. So let's bring the shoulders down. And um, we do use our pecs, right? So if we engage the pecs, the pecs tend to bring the shoulders not only forward, but also up. So what we want to do is it moving in the opposite direction, bring the shoulders down. Now roll your arms open so your palms face forward. And then squeeze your shoulder blades together behind you and feel the front of your chest open up. Now notice what happens to your neck. For some of us, the head goes forward. So bring your head on top of your shoulders and drop your chin just a little bit so you can feel the neck get a little bit longer. So if you're looking up toward where the wall and the ceiling meet, look straight forward or actually even look down a little bit because that will give a little bit more length to the back of your neck. See, and with my motor mouth in here, we're hanging out in a stretch. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, so you can let that go. So, okay, so now we're just going to do a little bit of, of yeah, of Tai Chi-like things. So another thing that we do with kayaking optimally is we move from our spine. So um, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, okay, so can we move this way a little bit? There we go. Okay, so anyway, ah, not in the midst of that. Okay. So, um, moving for the spine, or moving from the center of the spine, everybody let your knees drop just a little bit. Let the knees bend. You don't have to be grueled a bit. Just let the knees relax. So you can drop your tailbone. Because if you, yeah, exactly. If you drop your tailbone, you can feel your low back get a little bit longer. Okay, so drop the tailbone, and then drop your shoulders. And then open your heart to one another and to the waves. And lift tall from the crown of your head. And again, just let that chin drop a little bit so that the back of the neck gets long. And now you're in that optimal up and down upright position so that you can do, okay, and here I'm going to try to do this without the mic, so I'm not going to snag. Are we snagging? Oh, okay. So we're just with that uprightness, so keep all that stuff engaged, and just spin from your spine. Keep your heart open. Keep your face, keep your eyes facing forward as if you're looking down, your head's dropping. And let your arms relax and just let them follow that motion. So if you like, you can do a little bit of bend the knee, straighten the knee. Just let it move back and forth and let yourself smack yourself in the butt. <laughs> Thank you. 